a great presentation. As we go out of the hallway, I'm going to ask you to use your Toastmasters quiet voices. We have some doctors who are making some very important videos across the way, and they're videotaping. So we use our quiet voices after the session, and then go downstairs and use our noisy voices. That would be awesome. So thank you for your help. Can you do that for me? Yeah. Yes. All right. Enjoy your session. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hello, Toastmasters and honored guests. Welcome to the District 30 Summer 2012 Mission Impossible Toastmaster Leadership Institute. To make sure you are in the right place, this is how to be a world-class club coach, sponsor, mentor, workshop session. Before we begin, I would like to cover a few housekeeping rules. Lunches are not only of our only available to purchase until 11 o'clock today. After that, you will have to, you will not purchase any lunch. You, you will have to go get food somewhere else. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> if you already bought your lunch online, please check in with the information desk and get your ticket. Please turn off all cell phones or place them on silent, not vibrant. Make sure that you sign the attendance sheet that will be circulated. And at the end of this session, please remember to complete the evaluation form. And they will be collected at the end of the session. We appreciate your feedback. Now, I would like to introduce our speaker for today. Srinivas Sainini, District Governor, passionate about Toastmaster. District Governor Srinivas Sainini believes that Toastmasters International is the only organization on the planet which offers everything to everyone, everywhere. Srinivas has... With that, I'm going to actually cut off my own introduction because I, I stayed up all night to write that. <laughs> <laughs> but she gave me a wonderful, wonderful <laughs> How many of you got that beautiful letter that you're now qualified as a club coach? And you have to give it was a postcard. Very nice postcard. postcard. <laughs> nice, right? So Michelle Cable, our lieutenant our marketing has to put, put that together. And it looks like it's working. And we need you. And we need you because you're good, right? How many of you are here because I am teaching? <laughs> So, <laughs> so the title of the title of the presentation says how to be a world class coach, mentor, sponsor. But we're going to be focusing a whole lot on coaching today. But we're going to cover what is a coach, what is a club coach, what is a club mentor, and what is a club sponsor. Right? So trivia here. Who qualifies to be a club sponsor? Any member. Any member. Any member can. Donna, what should a club sponsor do to get Club hurt? sponsor is helping to build a club and get the club up and running. A new club. Yes. So help, help initiate the paperwork, help with the sample meeting. How many of you are from a brand new club? Brand new club that charter from July. Right. So some of you know what a sponsor is. Who, who's a mentor? Larry, come on. Uh, Laura Harrington, talk of Lincolnshire. I'm a mentor for a club that isn't quite chartered yet, so I don't know how I can speak about it. Okay, great, great. So a mentor is somebody that gets assigned after a club's, club gets chartered, which is a new club starts, and then you get to stay with the club and kind of shepherd them for the first six months or one year. And the president has to sign off that you did the work in mentoring them for you to get credit. Now, club coach is what we're all here about. What, who qualifies to be a club coach? Larry. Are you calling me again? <laughs> <laughs> because you raised your hand. <laughs> Lori Harrington, Talk of Lincolnshire, Toastmasters. Robert, my husband, and I have agreed to be club coaches for uh, club in Glen Ellen, Illinois. Town Criers. It's called Town Criers. And it's a great way to have a couple work together to build a club up. <laughs> but 
that doesn't happen that often that a couple, a club coaches for one club, but you're allowed up to two coaches for each club. And a club that deserves a coach should be less than 12 members in strength. And we have like 47 clubs. Yes. Our Lieutenant Governor of Marketing elect <laughs> is excited yes. about helping these clubs. So we need at least Question there. Do you have to be a new club in order to request a coach? No. Okay. I'm glad you asked. Okay. Uh, what was the question again? If you have to be, a, the club has to be a new charter member to, be, to ask for a coach. A club which is struggling and which has less than 12 members qualifies to get a club coach. And it could be it could be a fifty year old club, it could be chartered two years ago. But if your club is below twelve members, how many of you are from a club that is below twelve members? <laughs> we, are. we have we have a couple of people. So what is the difference between a coaching and mentoring? I'm gonna pick on Dave Mark. Oh, okay. It's your session. <laughs> I'll, I'll do. Yes. The club mentor is one that's helping a club that is just char chartered up, and so they're trying to get it up to full strength and to know all their duties and how a regular club is being run. So that is the basic idea. The club coach is coming into a club that is already established, has already been chartered for a long time, and they are needing extra help to remember the basic ideas and to get uh, to be evaluated and to correct any conditions that they find that need. I'm hoping I'm translation translating but a mentor is teaching a coach is improving. Yes that, that's what I was getting at. <laughs> basic difference between a coach and a mentor. Donna's Raising a hand. Oh, no, 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 I was saying very good. <laughs> good answer, good answer. A coach comes in when, when something is not working well, when you want to improve, right? A mentor is, a mentor is somebody do, that helps teach new things, teach new things. Now, for coaching to work, what has to happen? So there's a coach and there's a person that is being coached or an organization that is being coached. What is a crucial thing about coaching to work? Bob Roman. Well, the person you're going to coach wants to be coached. Right. Yeah. Yes, Bob. And Bob knows it real well. So my, my dad is a professor and has taught thousands of graduate students over his life. He was trying to coach me. But I, I didn't think that I needed coaching. <laughs> <laughs> It never worked. So a club has to be ready for a coach, right. for coaching to work. So the way it works is a club asks the district to provide a coach for their club. And that's when this gets initiated. So you only come into play when the club is ready and willing to accept the coach. Everybody clear? Yes. Now, when does a club coach get credit? Six months? No. Mm -hmm. Charter straight away. There's no credit. Laurie, can you answer this? Sure. <laughs> the club coach gets credit if within the year, because it goes from July 1st to June 30th of the next year, from what I read. But they have to be up to full strength. They have to be 20 members, and they have to have at least a distinguished so let me help you there. Yes, good sorry. job, good job, great job. A club coach remains in the club, remains a club of uh, a coach of that club until the club gets distinguished or better. Until the club gets distinguished or better. You only get credit when the club gets distinguished and they don't need you anymore. So your job is to make sure you stay on until they don't need you anymore. Your job is to replace yourself. So a coach can stay even past the one year term? Yes. So you're allowed a maximum of two years? Two years. Okay. Two years. After that, uh, you can request for a month for reappointment, but if you are not able to 
work with the club and help the club in two years, chances are it's not going to work. So if you, if you attend this training, you are going to be successful as a club coach in two years. Uh, is it the president who requests the coach? Yes, that's a great question. The president requests a coach to the district governor or the regional governor of marketing and the governor of marketing submits a paperwork. And you get a wonderful pin. Did you get your pin? Great. You, you get that pin. You get to wear and start, start that around mm -hmm. once you become a club coach. I'm sure all this information is online, right? Yes. All of this information is online. A very important thing is we're going to use a sign-in sheet. Please write down your email ID. So I have a lot of materials. We're, we're, we're not going to have any visuals because this is the subject is very passionate to me, and uh, it will be very rewarding to you once you once you go about doing this. I would very much like to have a coach for at least one of the coaches. Borderline is like twelve, but even though I'm here attending the coaching, I'd much rather have somebody else be the coach in the club to just bring yes. in and then Gina brought up a wonderful point. So we talked about, hey, the person or the organization should be willing to be coached for the coaching to work. What are some of the external, what are the other factors other than the coach and the person that is coached for the coaching to be successful? So what happened between me and my father? What happened there? It didn't work. You were too close. You had to get out that too close. Yeah. Larry, speaking from experience, too close. So if you already know a whole lot of members in that club, and if you already have relationships with people in that club, chances are your coaching won't work because you're too close. What you need is an outsider's perspective to see what is functioning well and what can be improved. What are some of the others? Um, how about coaching style? For example, the members like a little bit of nurturing type of coaching rather than... And that's what a coach is all about. The coach does not do the work for them. The coach looks at the club and then helps them build their own club. So the coach is not trying to come in and try to make a mimic out of that club. So typically a coach is from a successful club. How, what do you, how do you define a successful club? Charter strength, presence distinguished. Charter strength, believes in the distinguished club program, has prepared speeches, has a lot of advanced communicators, competent communicators. So your job as a coach is not to make another club just like yours. You, your job as a coach is to go to that club while maintaining its uniqueness, help that club achieve whatever they want to achieve. So let's let's take you step by step. What needs to, so let's assume you got appointed as a club coach. First meeting. What do you do in the first meeting? Observe. Observe. Yeah. Observe. A lot of good coaches in this room today. Observe. <laughs> and what else do you need? So you're going to this club. You got appointed. You're going to this club for the first time. What else do you need? The moment of truth. That's it. That's a good way of thinking. Moments of truth will happen, not the first day. So the first day, you're observing. You're also getting introduced. So say, I imagine I introduced to a new friend, because I introduced you to that friend. Now you have a connection, right? So introduction is very important. When you go to that club on the first day, have your area governor, or somebody that kind of knows people in the club introduce do you understand the importance of that? Anybody have questions with that? And then ask for a five to seven minute slot that day. Five to seven minute slot. And what, what should you do in the five to seven minute slot? Icebreaker. Icebreaker is a wonderful, who came up with that idea? <laughs> great, great. Icebreaker speech is great. So what you're trying to do there is you're establishing a connection. The members. Now, now that they have seen the talent you have, the passion you have for helping that club, they're going to be more susceptible to coaching. 
So use that five to seven minute speech to cement that relationship. How many of you think you're a great communicator? <laughs> I'm not everybody. Okay. You are, because otherwise you wouldn't be in this room. Right? So now you establish that connection. Now people see that you're an advanced communicator. That's what it's very important to establish that connection and show the level of your communication and leadership with, with the club. So people then now look up to you. At the end of the meeting, thank everybody. Uh, there is there is a there is a sheet which is called the club coach. I forgot the name of it, but it's a, it's a it's a sheet. It's a club assessment sheet, which I will send out. So on that day, don't discuss that with anybody. Uh, there's like a 20 point checklist. We're, we're going to send that out. And then just make notes on that sheet. Don't discuss anything. When you're leaving, give that sheet to all the members of the club and the officers, and ask them to do a self-assessment of that sheet. Uh, the sheet is in my car, so <laughs> you, you won't see what it is, but it's online. Ask them next time to bring those sheets back. Right? So officers should write O on those sheets, because the perspective of the officers might be different than the perspective of the members. So on that sheet of paper, which is a self-assessment of the club, the officers will write O, and the members will write M, right? And they'll come to the next meeting and give it to you, right? Hmm? This is anonymous? This is anonymous. Okay. Anonymous. So this is after the first meeting. Second meeting. So. There are different ways of doing this. Second meeting, uh, you help them with running a good meeting. And chances are, if it's a struggling club, you have time on the agenda to do something called the moments of truth. How many of you know what moments of truth from the successful moments of truth? What it does is it moments of truth helps the club. So now they did an assessment based on the checklist. But this is an interactive, interactive session where the club members assess where they are, right? And then ask them to be honest, honest, right? So what comes out of the moments of truth in the end? Now what is happening there? Defining your gaps, what you, what you can improve and what you're doing well. Great. So everybody now knows what they're doing well and what they can improve. How many of you do SWOT analysis at work? SWOT, strengths, SWOT. weaknesses. S W O T. Yeah, yeah. Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. Again, there's a four-point grid <laughs> on this wonderful thing. There's a four-point. So you did the moments of truth. If you have time that day, do it the same day. If you don't, go to the next meeting. Take this to the next meeting. Four grids here: strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. Start listing them now. In the next meeting, and this this is coming again. This, if if the ideas are not coming from the club members, then you're not going to be that effective. Yeah. Right. So ideas are coming from. The, so strengths. What could be some of the clubs of a struggling club? Even though they're struggling, what could be some of the strengths? Enthusiasm. Enthusiasm, because that people still want to continue on. There are not enough members to fill up the agenda, but people still want to continue on. Enthusiasm. Comprehensive. Friendly. Friendly. Great location, right? Mm -hmm. it, the time, uh, the day and time. Time of the day. So strength. So what do you do with strengths and spot? Don't change. <laughs> Build on the strengths. Right? Now is the weaknesses. What could be some of the weaknesses? Low membership. Low membership. Meeting doesn't start on time. Meeting doesn't start on time, doesn't end on time. No adjustment. No adjustment. Poor participation. 
time of the day could be a weakness. Location. No agenda. Weakness. No agenda. Lack of uh, in some corporate environments, closed club, yeah. closed club. So there's an opportunity there to open that club up, still open it to the corporation. And all, not all corporations agree to it, but it has been done before. No marketing. No marketing. Probably goes with no agenda, but you know, trying to fill the agenda the day of the meeting. You know, waiting, waiting too long to fill the agenda. Waiting too long. Yeah. You've got a couple of strong personalities who own the club and everything goes their way in. And I know you dealt with one of the clubs. <laughs> <laughs> and more often than not, it's the people. It's the people. And that's where, when I asked you to do a self-assessment, uh, when I asked uh, people to, uh, when I asked you to give a self-assessment sheet, I asked, uh, I had requested that you ask the officers to mark O, so you, you'll see a quantum shift in what the officers are thinking and the members are thinking. And how do you deal with small, uh, tough personalities? And you're going to see this as a club. You, your challenge is going to be dealing with some of the tough personalities. Not always, but sometimes some clubs are. I kind of approached, in, and actually in two of the clubs, and suggested that they were so good at being the person who did all these roles would they consider being a mentor that maybe it's possible someone else could be the Toastmaster this year? <laughs> yes, so she, she hit on a right point. So the club is already struggling, and you have a strong personality. You still need that person. You gotta find a work, find a way to work with that person. A couple of things you could do, you could, you could try, Go that extra mile to build that personal rapport with that person. But if that person is difficult, that might be difficult sometimes. So when you're doing all this SWOT analysis and act like the weight of the room is on that person's side. Hey, the name that starts with F, <laughs> what is, <laughs> what do you think? So. Give the dog a good name, right? <laughs> so, so try and work with that person that way. And chances are, the, the reason why that person is acting that way is, is because maybe in the past they tried a club coach and that club coach didn't work out. Maybe there are some skeletons in the closet which we don't know about. Just try and get some information about what would have gone wrong. And work with that person as much as you can. But if you can't, you have other members to bank on to. But you, you're, going to, you're going to run into some personality issues. But you can't list those in weaknesses <coughs> because now you're going to turn off some people. So what do you do with weaknesses? Turn them into strengths. Turn them into strengths. Turn them into strengths. So uh, we all go to motivational talks. Uh, in adversity, there is a seed of Whatever. So everybody knows that every weakness can be converted sometimes into a strength, <coughs> right? Opportunities. So you got strengths, weaknesses, opportunities. What are some of the opportunities? Maybe they're missing new member packets. Maybe they they don't have some type of a board set up for the meeting so that people come in or where what the club is and what the they don't have club is. banner agenda agenda they don't have a website. A lot of these weak clubs don't have a website. So all what they need is somebody a little bit tech savvy that can help set the free toast post. Or go to Jim Bowen's three website session at three o'clock. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, one other thing we did this year is you don't have to do it by yourself and ask someone else. Like as the area governor, I asked my division governor to come once or ask other members from other clubs to come as visit. And actually a couple people joined and it turned around. And yes. it isn't you don't have to do it by yourself. Exactly. So a club coach is there assessing what is needed and helping out. So one of the opportunities, hey, don't try it. Ask for help from other clubs. Ask for help from uh, 
from a strong club, ask for help from the curated owner. So that's an opportunity. No. Well, I had a uh, coach tell me that uh, to help the club, he joined the club. What do you think of that? You, you had a. I had a coach join the club he was coaching. What do you think of that? That's a. So it's not in the opportunity section, but let's cover it because I, Bob is a coach on steroids. <laughs> <laughs> so after after you go to a couple of meetings, I, I'm a very emotional. I'm emotional, but not emotional. I don't cry in public, but I get attached. <laughs> I, I get attached to um, people in clubs, so I tend to kind of join after a while. <laughs> so what happens when a club joins a club? Coach. Uh, the, the, the coach joins the, joins the club is now you're too close to the forest to see the trees. It's like when you let your dog you, sleep on your bed. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you lose that outsider's perspective. You should be an outsider looking in, helping. Avoid the tendency to do the work yourself. We're all we're all passionate Toastmasters. We want to wanna help out, create the agenda for them, uh, create the website for them. Avoid that because that is going to become a problem because the club is going to be relying on you and then it's going to be back to square one when you have to move on. And then there is going to be an additional coach assigned. So avoid this tendency to join a coach. But do the Toastmasters International Rules uh, agree to if you join? You cannot join a club before you're appointed a club coach, but after you're allowed to join. And sometimes it makes sense. Sometimes it makes sense. Uh, six months down the line, one one year down the line, when you see the club rebuilding and you want to be a part of a thriving club, join the club. But try and avoid it as much as possible, at least for the first six to one year, six months to one year. Another opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, make sure that the person who's the contact person. For your club in the TI, uh, in the yeah TI, um, answers the phone, mm -hmm. responds to emails, connects with. Uh, and that that prospects. becomes the website. So it's just simply having a phone number, a working phone number, and a working email ID on your website you can make a CEO difference. Mm -hmm. yes. yeah. Another, I'm Georgina Vernon from Accenture Rising Voices in Chicago. Another, I think, very important opportunity is training. Often clubs or members cannot attend training like today's training. I would suggest, and I know that's when I go, well, that's going to be one of my goals as a president for next uh, next July one, to encourage others to come in and train our people. Just get ideas of what we'd like to do and train. Because yes. if you don't know, then I mean it's not a good excuse. But when you don't know, you don't know. That's a great idea. So again, more training. At the club setting, sometimes and then yes. information about uh, other sessions. Well, now it's been almost a year now since the successful club series and leadership excellence series are free downloads, and that's an excellent way for people to get credit and to bring that training to the club. You can personalize and hand slides with your own example. So let, let's go to threats. What are some of the threats? Things that are going to like ensure the club disbands. So, so there is a reason why the club has 12 members. Uh, so what are some of the threats that can be dangerous with the opponent? Losing part of the 12. Losing part of the 12. Yeah, losing every member. So you have to do something right away, right? So you're, you're losing members every day. Ambivalence. They're just so maybe discouraged and unenthusiastic that they Lack of mentoring. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not giving um, manual speeches. You need to make sure they're giving manual speeches. Yeah. Four of the members only are attending the meetings out of the 12. <laughs> or having a negative person there who is talking down everything that you're trying to build up. Yep, yep. I'm having difficulty then understanding the difference between a weakness and a threat because it seems like we're saying the same thing as a weakness, which is also a threat. 
weakness is something that can be improved on. Threat is something if you don't act on it right away. A weakness is something that can be built on? Built on. Okay. Threat is layoffs are a threat, right? Mm -hmm. if, you, if your club is, uh, if your corporate club is going through a lot of layoffs, mm -hmm. that's an immediate threat. So to overcome that threat, you have to have, you have to open this club up. Make it a community club which still meets at your com corporate club. Corporate club, <coughs> but opens it up. Right? It has been done before. I was a, I was a coach for UOP Toastmasters. They were going through a bad phase. And they opened the club up. Where is We have a UOP. Brett, yeah. where are you? Yeah. UOP was going through a bad phase. Before your time. Eventually, I became the president of that club. That's, that's <laughs> and then it improved. Two years <laughs> after my coaching, and I've, I've coached personal communicators, which which was going through a bad phase, and we built it up. And then three years later, layoffs happened again. So now it's a, it's an open club. So they have kept it open throughout. So they have some a good mix of people from within the corporation and outside. What are some of the other threats that can? We lose your space. Your lose their space. Yeah. Lose their yeah. main space. Yeah. <laughs> so you you list them all out, and these are the things that need immediate action, right? Threats are the things that need immediate action. So now now everybody is contributing to moments of truth. Everybody has strengths, weaknesses, opportunities. Threats listed. That means you have buy-in from the club to improve this. But just all this mumbo jumbo analysis is not going to help. People need to be able to feel a pride in belonging to a club. They need to be able to see, hey, when the club is successful, how does my club look like? Right? So now is a crucial part. So the meeting after that, this is formulating a vision for your club. Vision for your club. What do you want your club to be known as? And everybody should be fine. So Mount Prospect Club went through a uh, went through a club coach, and then it has a tagline. What's the tagline of the Mount Prospect Club? Bob? We're the friendliest club in the universe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I joined. Right? Any, any other taglines from other clubs? Plenty of free parking around the back. <laughs> <laughs> so you you want your members to see where you where you want to go. So when when everybody comes up with that vision statement of what you want to be known as, you got my right vision. Very important. People need to. Your job as a club coach is to instill that pride in the club. If somebody sees you at a tail, oh, you're from Fox Valley Toastmasters Club, which has been president distinguished for 10 times in a row, produces great leaders, produces best district governors, uh, has vibrant meetings, right? So when people see that in their, in their mind's eye, they'll want to contribute more, right? So now you have the analysis, you have the vision. But you have to make the rubber meet the road, right? Right. Right? And that's where our good old distinguished club program comes into play. Now, so you when a club is struggling, you, you wanna have you wanna start slow, you wanna get the meetings organized, have an agenda, start on time, end on time. When you when you're seeing a little bit of results, when you have the vision in this mind, to achieve that vision, use the distinguished club program as a guide. Because this is what is going to make it all happen. So what the, the Distinguished Club program has uh, two CCs, two members achieving their CCs. So here's where our strengths, weaknesses, and opportunities. Here is our vision. How can you help Frank to make this happen? Right? So are you going to give a speech every meeting to happen? And are you going to put your name by, hey, achieving one competent communicator? So have every every person, every member, be a part of that distinguished club program, right? And who is owning all this? 
the members are owning all this. Right? And then once every one month, once every two months, try and see if you're achieving this. If your members are achieving this. Keep recognizing people for small steps. Small steps. Somebody uh, didn't give a speech for the last six months and they gave a speech. Make it a big deal. Have the area governor come and uh, praise that person. If somebody's uh, getting a competent communicator award, give people a standing ovation. Because that club needs motivation. So reward small steps towards achieving. As a coach. And th your reward could be just saying nice things about the speech that, and what you remember. It could be sending a handwritten note. It could be saying good things about this person to their supervisor. Sometimes in corporations it does work. As a club coach, you can do a whole lot of things to keep people motivated. So that, that is the process. So let's let's kind of review some of the things we learned. For a club to qualify for a club coach program, the club needs to be below 12 members in strength. How many club coaches can a club get? Two. 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 And it's always good to tag team. Because chances are you won't be able to make it to every meeting. So it's very important to have at least this one other person and it's very important that you two work together. We can't not work together and fill the club up. So, and that's the job of the district governor and the learning and governor marketing to make sure you do a good match.com between the club coaches. Right? So, club, uh, how many coaches? When does a club coach become successful? Distinguished. Distinguished or better. When does a club get distinguished? When you achieve five goals and the membership goal is 20 members or net gain of five. Who can help you with appointing a club coach? <laughs> District Governor. District Governor and the Lieutenant Governor Martin, the wonderful, lovely lady over here, Donna Weston. Mm -hmm. You get a great pin. We're going to treat you right. If you're a club coach in District 30, <laughs> I promise you, we are going to treat you right. As, as a matter of fact, if somebody signs up for a club coach today, I will give you a wonderful bag which says uh, Toastmasters on it so you can promote <laughs> Toastmasters <laughs> more. So if somebody wants to sign up for a club coach with Donna West and gives that commitment, I will give you a bag which you can carry around proudly. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, for some of you who are planning to be mentors and sponsors, mentor is somebody that is for the new club. You you get assigned as a mentor. You stay on for six months and help them out, and then you get you get credit as a mentor. As a sponsor, you help with the paperwork, help with the sample. And the most important, the reason why we have so many volunteers in Toastmasters, so much participation in Toastmasters, everything is tied to an individual goal. What happens when you are successful as a club coach? As an individual, what do you get out of it? <laughs> you get credit towards your advanced leader, Silver. Advanced leader, Silver. And that's for actually sponsor mentor work. Yeah, sponsor, mentor, or the coach. The coach is the most rewarding. The most rewarding. It's it entails a little bit more work than a sponsor and mentor, but it's the most rewarding. You don't want to not get that rewarding experience. So that is your credit you're getting. What else would you get? So I, I looked at it as hey. I'm going in there. I want to. I want to grow up in my organization. I want to. I want to build my own business down the line. I want to. I want to be seen as a consultant that goes and looks at an organization outside in, 
and is able to kind of turn around. I want to be a turnaround artist, right? Yeah. Turnaround artist. So as a club coach, you are in this unique position to turn around an organization. I know a lot of people still respect Deepmar for something he did 20 years ago in say, rescuing a club. I go to clubs that I've helped and I have people that are willing. So when when uh, I was a division governor when I helped UOP Toastmasters, and from that club, I had uh, I had Brent that became an area governor. I had uh, uh, Kathy that became a treasurer. So because I helped that club out, they were willing to help me out in my personal goals for Toastmasters. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I happened I happened to coach a club and. Uh, one of the members was on a nomination committee for another professional organization that I wanted to run for. And she put in a good word. I got elected. So the, the results are phenomenal. When you, when you turn around an organization, when you, when, you, when you give that pride back to that club, the results are phenomenal. Team building skills. You learn how to organize team effective. So again, I, I'm, I'm very passionate about club coaches, so you can, I can go on and on, but this is your time to ask questions on things that you need answers. I don't know if I like the restriction about only the 12 members, because sometimes as a, as a, club, mem as a club, everybody is comfortable with each other to the point where you know, they, they've been there for so long, they haven't attended any of the training, and uh, I feel like we can, I think we should be able to still bring someone in just to talk to us or to be with us for about a year to encourage the group. I mean, we, got, we, we have the members, but still some people do become, or clubs do become complacent. You hit on the right point, so just because a club is a low membership doesn't mean, uh, just because some clubs are still functional with 12 members. And some clubs are not functional with 50 members. So <laughs> membership alone does not tell you. And that's what I, I, I missed that point. Membership alone is not the problem. Okay. There's a bigger problem here. And you, you don't, And that's where you have the area governors that are, that are there just to support you, your club. So if you have a club like that, uh, an area governor would help, definitely help. And if you want it a little long term, we, we can, the area governor can still make it work. That person won't get credit, the person that is helping you, but there are a lot of people that would be willing okay. to help. Okay, so there are other options besides yes. having to find yes. it. Okay, yes. good. Because having 12 members, if only three show up each time, that's yeah. a problem. Mm -hmm. So on paper, they may look good, but you know, in reality, they're not. Mm -hmm. Also, I would say that uh, the club should take the initiative to reach out to outside, you know, for uh, the district, the area leadership. Yes, the club should take the initiative, and our lovely, wonderful Lugnanga Marketing is going to have a team. On our team, are going to be all the area governors and the team governors. What are the goals that should be met for uh, a person to be considered to be a coach? Uh, if it's a new club, uh, they're bonding and getting things going. How long, what goals do you have to have reached before you can sign up to do that? Club coach. A club coach should always be from a good club, good thriving club. Uh, there are exceptions to everything. Uh, a club coach should have at least completed a competent communicator or a competent leader. It's not a rule, it's an unwritten rule. It's an unwritten rule. You could be a great motivator and a coach even without achieving those, but if you're trying to get the club back on their feet, you want to lead by example, by at least com completing the competent communicator. So, and now you can teach other people. You have to have a, you have to like people. <laughs> and you have to have the ability to understand that it's not about you. So you, your satisfaction is going to be, leadership is very hard and dark and dirty. A lot of things happen when nobody sees them, right? So somebody that derives internal satisfaction out of seeing things run is somebody that would qualify for a coach. 
it's a different person. And somebody, somebody does not that does not have preconceived notion. Somebody is, that is willing to listen, listen and see things for what they are, not what they what they want them to be. See things for what they are and how they can change them. Do I get my bag today? <laughs> yes. Yes. Donna I will. I will walk with you down. <laughs> give you the bag. Just kind of a general question for people who are currently coaching clubs who may already be in the room is just like a list of commonly seen coaching issues in District 30 right now. The, so I, like, well, what are the coaches facing is like issues the most common. Thing yes, yes. So seen. you hit on a great point. So on the website, there's a corner for club coaches. There's a whole lot of information on there. Uh, if you're trying to get this off the ground where we have like a forum for club coaches to meet and share best practices because you don't want to reinvent the wheel and I'm putting myself yes I'm putting myself on the, I'm putting myself on the spot here by saying I will assist Donna with some of the coordination is that the third yeah toastmasters.org and we'll have quarterly forums to discuss We'll, we'll hop on the Club Coach Express. We are at the yes. end of the session. Please make sure that we have enough time to sign in sheets and completed an evaluation form. And at this point, I'd like to thank Shrini Boss and present some of the certificate and presents. And thank you, everybody, for your participation. Please, please don't forget to put your email IDs on the sign in sheet because you'll get some idea. Does anybody need?